What's up, poker people? My name's Wes, and this is my poker vlog. It's been a while, hasn't it? I've got a vlog for you guys today, though. It's gonna be incredible. It's my biggest winning cash game session ever. I live streamed this session last Saturday to YouTube, and you can watch the highlights now. Here they go. If you haven't already seen, I've been live streaming my Saturday night 5-5 no cap cash games to YouTube. This is the layout and the view for those games. Got a selfie cam, got the board cam, and we have a whole card cam. Now in this particular hand, I was having some trouble with the whole card cam. So I got a screen grab of my cards, King, 10 of spades. We are in the first straddle. Albert on my left had a double straddle of 25. We got a raise to 75. I have King, 10 of spades, I'm gonna call. We go heads up to the flop. Pot's 185, you'll be able to see the pot on the bottom right. You can see what I bought in for at the bottom and my stack. I've already lost half my stack, but I flopped a gut shot and a flush draw in this hand. The seabed is 75. I'm gonna probably check raise here. Yep, I'm gonna check raise to 225. Here we get a call. The turns, the deuce of clubs, not what I was looking for, but I've got a strong enough draw that I can bet again here. There's a lot of river cards we can continue to bet if we miss, but mostly we're just thinking about hitting a spade. Hitting a jack for the gut shot would be nice too. Maybe a red jack on the river might be the best card ever. Oh, the ace of spades. We have the nut flush, but it is a paired board. There are some hands that can beat us, but I still think we need to be value betting this type of hand. Here on the river, I'm gonna bet I'm hoping to get called. A raise would be really interesting. I don't know if I can call a raise. But I'm gonna bet healthy on the river. Hoping to get called by some sort of ace queen, ace king hand. We get called and his cards go straight into the muck. As we fast forward here, you can see I've actually gotten unstuck at the bottom. My stack is backed up, up to 5,100. During the live session, I'm actually updating these stats. These were not added afterwards. So this is gonna be what I said my stack was at the time and I update it. Mostly after every big hand. In this hand, I don't have a big hand. I do have six three suited in the big blind. A flop of three on an ace nine three rainbow board. One of my suit. I'm gonna check around to the button. He's gonna take a stab at it, but I do have a pair. I don't have a hand that I really wanna call down. Maybe I could do something different. We're gonna check race. Make it 150. Uh-oh, Albert's not folding. That's not good. Maybe he's not paying attention. Albert! Albert, it's on you! Albert! Oh no. Albert calls. And the button calls? Okay, I'm gonna need a six or a three. Maybe a club? Four of spades. Well, that shouldn't be a card that helps anybody else. Maybe I can keep repping some sort of two pair hand here. I'm gonna fire one more time. Albert quickly folds. Come on, button. Put him in the muck. Yes! I actually misread my hand. I thought I had five three and turned a straight draw. This game was actually recorded during the Andrew and Brad meetup game. We did invite Brad and Andrew to come play. You can see the house has a reserved button on my right for whichever of them wants to play. Now they did not join us, but I gotta come to their defense. When they do these meetup games, they are not there to go sit back in the corner and play the high stakes game. They're there to go around, change tables, play with all the players, take photos. So I understand why they didn't come play. But we did have a seat open for them, and I understand why they didn't come play. So instead of battling out with Brad and Andrew, I have to battle it out with Albert. I have a seven in this hand. Seven, six offsuit, leading out on the flop. Albert's gonna call. The turn is the five of diamonds, which doesn't help me, and it also makes the flush possible. I'm gonna go ahead and start checking. I checked Albert. Albert bets $50. Man, I snap call. 
Okay, the river pairs the board, it's a three. I don't think this card should change much. Albert could have a hand with a three in it, but I still have a seven. I'm gonna call. This hand has a $10 button straddle. I'm in middle position. I'm gonna look down at Ace, Jack of Diamonds. Folds to me. Let's bump it up. I make it 50 to go. Onto the button. Calls pretty quickly. And we get a call from the small blind. Three ways to the flop. And freeze it. Ace, Jack of Diamonds. All right, we flop a flush draw on a paired board. Sounds familiar. So for last time, the turn paired. We're gonna see about this. That's 75. Button calls. Turn is. Oh, I thought we made a. I thought we made a flush, but it's a red. Ten of hearts. Okay, I bet again here. It's like about 200. He didn't fall for it. Red, ah, eight of diamonds. Okay, so we have a flush. We have the nut flush on a paired board. I think if he has some sort of set on the flop or turn, we would know about it, or if he had trips. I'm gonna value bet this. If so for some reason he raises, I'll be concerned. I'm gonna bet, oh, not that much. All right, you're gonna bet 425, and he folds. Oh well, a good hand, made a small pot. After a few hours of play, Albert's getting bored. He's putting the $100 straddle on. I'm on 72. Uh, yeah. Seven, eight, seven, eight, seven. Uh, <laughs> All I want is a hand like 7 8 suited to go to battle. Let's see if I get lucky. It's going to start fooling around. People are going to play. Fairly straightforward when there's a hundred dollar shuttle out there. So round to Kurt. He's the shortest stack at the table. He's just gonna rip it in. I don't have a hand, and Albert's gonna call blind. We're gonna show his hand to the whole cam. He's got nine five offsuit. Oh, he flops a five. Turns a king. Oh, he rivers two pair. Kurt has king, queen, turn the best hand, but Albert sucks out on the river. Albert's back on the button. He's got a $30 button straddle on this hand. I'm actually gonna sit this hand out. And since it's included in the vlog, that probably means something crazy happens. Like this guy in the big blind, Raising to $400 pre-flop over a $30 button shuttle? What is going on? At this point, you might be wondering if my title is clickbait. It is not clickbait. This is actually the biggest winning cash game session I've ever had. It just took a while to get going. As you can see, I'm still at 5,700 in my stack. We are probably about halfway through the session, surprisingly, but it's gonna start heating up, as you can tell, because Albert calls. Okay, flop is nine for deuce. Pretty tame flop. If you raise pre-flop with some sort of hand, jacks through aces, you gotta like this flop. You could even have ace king and like this flop. He's gonna down bet to $350. Albert on the button. I can tell you right now, after calling 400 pre-flop, if he has anything on this board, he's definitely gonna call. And he does, go into a turn. Six of spades. So now we have two flush draws, clubs and spades. Couple straight draws available. If I'm sitting in the big blind and I have some sort of ace king, ace queen hand, I'm just gonna probably check because I'm worried Albert's got something and he's not gonna fold. But he bets a thousand dollars. Albert actually tanks for quite a while after this bet. I was kind of surprised because he took a long, long, long time, as you can see how I fast forwarded through. And then he's just gonna raise it, men raise it to $2,000. Now guess what happens? Now this guy has to tank forever. Now he's not super deep, so I thought this was really weird. 
If he goes all in, it's only another like $1,600 for Albert to call. So I guess he's just deciding is his pair or flush draw good enough and he does go with it. And then Albert asked for a count because he's not sure if he wants to call. This hand is so weird at this point, but it gets weirder. Albert's thinking about it. How can this get more weird? Well, Albert's gonna call and then I'm gonna let you listen to what they say. Albert says, run it twice or chop it right now. And the kid agrees to chop. There's no way Albert has a good hand and makes that offer. This kid should have said, rip it. No fucking way, oh my, oh my God. God. Albert had nothing but queen high and a gut shot straight draw and he got there on the river, but they had already agreed to chop it up. So nobody wins anything and we just wasted 10 minutes on this hand, but it was fun to watch. Wow. Everybody wanna take a picture with Brad. After that last hand, I think it's fair to say Albert is uh, loosened up a little bit. He's got the $150 under the gun straddle going on in this hand. In my game, we let any amount of straddle happen. Nobody's afraid to play big in this game. We just want the fun to happen. This hand does look like people are afraid to play. They're gonna fold all, all the way around to me and I've got ace, deuce, offsuit. It's just me and Albert. I'm just gonna put in a small raise, let them know I got something. I do expect them to call most of the time. It's only $150 more. Albert's gonna make the call. I'm gonna check my computer to see if I can see his cards. Just joking. Heads up, out of position against Albert. And we flop bottom pair on a spade, spade, spade board. Let me go ahead and check. Number checks. Oh, turn is an ace. I've got two pair now, but I'm gonna go ahead and check. Let's let Albert do some betting. And he does. He bets $200. Yeah, I can call that. I call 200. And the river. Oh, it's another spade. We both for sure have a flush now. I decided that it would be better to bet here than it would to check call or check fold. So I'm gonna go ahead and bet out here at $500. Uh, it's over to Albert. Oh no, he's reaching, that's not good. What's he doing? What are you doing? Oh, he actually min-raised me to a thousand. Um, yeah, I don't think I can, hmm. I don't think I can call that. It's kind of a weird raise, but I don't really know what to do, so I fold. And of course he shows that he does not have any spades. He gets us off of a chop. People always say they want to see not just winning poker hands, but also some losing poker hands in the vlogs. I hope you enjoyed me losing that last hand. We have nine eight of diamonds in this hand in the small blind with a button straddle. I'll make it 55. It's going around. We're going to get quite a few callers in this hand. A lot of people are going to tell you that suited connectors play good multi-way, but guess what? They play way better. Heads up. But we're going to have to play this uh, five ways. And the flop is, ooh, jack seven nine with two diamonds. I have a pair. I have a straight draw. It's a gut shot. I have a flush draw and I have a straight flush draw. But what do I always say? You're never going to hit it, so you better bet it to get him to fold. So I'm gonna bet strong in this hand. I'm probably never gonna hit it. Probably never hit any of it. So I bet 175, get two collars. We're gonna need to hit something. Oh no, we're gonna get three collars. Three collars! I just have a pair of nines. The turn is, yes, the deuce of clubs. Exactly what I wanted. Okay, the question is, do we bet or do we check? Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and bet. Like I said before, if I can get this hand down to heads up, we have a much better chance to win. If we try to go to the river four ways. We're probably not gonna win this hand very often. 
So I make a bet here. Let's gonna double checks his cards. I'm not sure what that's all about. You don't remember what you had, buddy? All right, he makes the call. Definitely gonna need some improvement on the river to win this hand. I don't think a nine's gonna do it. If a nine is the best hand, that means he probably has a better flush draw than us, which wouldn't be good. So I guess I feel like at this point, we're basically bluffing with a nine. Diamond, diamond. Oh, it's not a dime. Oh wait, that's a nine. Oh, I rivered a nine, I have trips. Holy cow. Oh my God. Wait, is this even better than a diamond? This might be better than a diamond. Okay, keep it together. Gonna make a good, healthy bet. Not too big, not too small. The bet is 750. Oh, he snap calls. Show the nine. Oh yeah, nice hand. Yeah, I know it's a nice hand. Yeah, I got that on the river. It happens. I've got the $25 straddle. Albert's got the 50 and the button makes it 150. I look down at King nine suited. I decided I like this hand so much. I'm gonna make it 425. Albert's out of the way. It's back around to the button who checks his cards again. Funny story about this guy. He actually forgets his cards in between every street and he has to look back and it's like unwrapping a present on Christmas every street because he has no idea what he possibly could have. You'll see it in this hand. I flop an ace high flush draw, I guess you could call it. I have the king nine of spades. It's ace, eight of spades with the deuce of clubs. I'm gonna see bet this. I'm gonna get 525 with my ace high, king high flush draw. What do you call this? Oh, see, look, he checked his cards. He had no idea. I wonder if he was shocked, surprised. Is he happy with what he saw? He decided to call whatever he saw. I guess it was good enough. And we missed the turn. And it pairs the board. Another flush draw on a paired board. What to do? He's got about $2,500 in front of him. The pot's about $2,000. Yeah, we're just gonna rip it in here. Oh God, he's gonna call? Oh man, I thought he was gonna call. Oh, oh, checks his cards because he doesn't know what he has. He's gonna think about it. What kind of hand do you think he has? Some sort of ace-x hand. Hand like ace-10 is put in a weird spot here. Loses to a lot of the aces. If he has a flush draw himself, it's gonna be hard to call this much with a flush draw. And he does let it go. I'm happy picking up this pot with just king high. Take a look at the bottom of the screen. I'm up to $8,900. I do update my stack for the viewers during the live stream. I'm gonna raise the $50 here in the small blind with king ten of clubs. I got two callers going to the flop. We're gonna be out of position. Oh, I flop a royal flush draw on a paired board. Kind of sounds familiar, flush draw on a paired board. I'm gonna see about $100. Do you guys remember why I'm gonna see bet? Because we're never gonna hit it. We can't just check, think we're gonna hit this and make a big hand because we're just gonna break the turn with the five of diamonds. But we're gonna bet again because we have a draw. He might have nothing. He might have smaller clubs. He might have ace high. Bet 250. He's thinking about it. He seems interested. And he calls. We're gonna need to improve on this river. It is the three of clubs. We make a flush. Now I decided in this exact hand, in this exact situation, I'm gonna check this river. Hoping he'll do some sort of firing, but he does check. After he checks, of course, I wish I had bet, but I'm okay with checking this river sometimes. We win a decent pot. All right, I'm gonna take another hand off. And you know what that means. Something crazy is about to happen. Albert's got the $100 button straddle on. This guy raises it up to 475. Albert's gonna call. They're going heads up to a flop. Ace, 10, five. Albert's in position. 
Nice cutting out a bet. Give us a pre-flop razor. Basically saying, I got an ace, buddy. What do you got? He's gonna bet off 500. It's over to Albert. Albert's thinking. Albert likes it. Albert calls 500. Turn is a five. Now there's two flush draws, clubs and diamonds, but it's a pretty safe board for any ace X hand. This guy's counting his stack down. He really only has about $500. Basically a same bet as an all in. Goes all in, Albert snap calls. Albert's a nine. Albert shows nine five. He called $475 pre-flop with 9.5, and that's what we call a joke hand, meaning he only played it because of something earlier that happened that was funny. We call those joke hands. You lose a lot of money with joke hands in poker, though. All right, let's play a real hand. I'm not gonna be playing any 9.5 offsuit hands. We got a jack-10 of clubs. I'm yet again in the small blind, out of position, making it 55. You can't always choose where you're gonna be when you have good or fun hands like the Jack-10. If I go ahead and raise it up. We haven't been three bet much tonight. We're gonna get three bet now. We're okay calling with Jack-10 suited. It's a pretty big bet. We actually get a call from the button before we even get a chance to call. We're going four ways to the flop with Jack-10 of clubs. And we flop a flush draw on a paired board. Yay! Hope we do have a flush draw. So we're definitely gonna be check calling. Checks over to the pre-flop raiser. The pot's already a little bit over a thousand dollars. He's gonna see that four hundred dollars. The button calls. I'm gonna call. Albert tanks forever. I was so sure he was gonna raise and blow me off this hand. And he just calls. Now this time we don't brick the turn. Out of position against three players, making the flush on a paired board. I actually decided this time I'm gonna lead out on the turn. I'm gonna make it a healthy bet. It's $1,400. Over to Albert. Tanking. 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 Is he frozen? Is Albert frozen? Oh, he folds. So it's back around the pre-flop razor. He's most likely the guy that's gonna give us action in this hand. He does call. The button's the shortest stack in the hand. He could actually go all in. I think it would be less than the bet, but we go heads up to the river. Okay, a complete brick. This is a good card. We're going to value bet. We can put this kid all in with our hand and be pretty confident that we're going to have the best hand most of the time. So every once in a while, he's going to have kings full, but we go all in and he's in the tank. And he's in the tank for a long, long time. Guessing the kid had an ace king type hand. I guess he could have any king and tank this long. And eventually he is going to call and he's gonna see the bad news. And we're starting to build a stack. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, this is where the vlog is gonna to start to get really interesting. Those chips are gonna be put into play and we're gonna play some huge pots. We're gonna start out with a $25 button straddle Limping, limping. Got two limps so far. It's over to Todd, he's gonna limp in. King four suited, yeah, I'm just gonna check. Four ways to the flop. We flop a flush draw and this time the board is not paired. What a relief, something fresh and new. It's gonna check over to me. Definitely gonna bet this king high flush draw. I end up betting pretty small, $55, about half pot. Albert comes along. Dan comes along. And a fold from Todd. 
Three ways to the turn. And it's the six of spades. All right, we have a king high flush. Again, the board is not paired. There's no straight flush possibility. And Albert is betting into us. I think in this spot, he can have lots of straights, lots of two pairs, lots of flush draws, lots of pair and flush draws. I can raise here and get called often. And if he has some sort of garbage hand that he was just messing around with, he's just gonna fold. But he has enough hands to call a 3x raise here. So I make a 600. I'm gonna double check to make sure he really has the hand that he thought he did. All right, we're going to the river. The eight of clubs. It does put a four liner out there. So now if he has any seven, he has a straight. We have the second nuts. We're feeling pretty good about our hand right now. Albert's tanking. Seems like he's trying to play it up a little bit. He's gonna lead into us. Now, I think our hand is so good, we can never just flat here. We actually wanna make a big raise. Maybe he does have a straight or a worse flush. He's definitely not folding a flush. Whether he would fold a straight in this spot really depends. The only question here is how big do I wanna make this raise? Do I wanna go to standard 3X or do I wanna do something different? Start doing some deconstruction on the stack because I'm going to raise to $2,500. If you have a flush, let's go, buddy. It's over to Albert, he's tanking. He's thinking about what to do. And I was only a little bit surprised when he ripped it in for over $7,000. I had already counted his stack and I was prepared for this possibility, but I didn't really want him to rip it in. I think normally I would snap call in this spot, but I've been running so bad recently and specifically against Albert that I did start to second guess and think, man, does he have the ace high flush? I take a few seconds to compose myself and just agree that I'm never folding here, so I might as well call. God damn it, really? <laughs> that sounds like good news, so I go ahead and show my hand. Now he did have the ace of spades and was trying to put on an intricate bluff on me. We're gonna take down a $17,000 pot, the biggest cash game pot I've ever won. My previous record was a 12.5K pot, but this one's bigger than that. And I'll tell you right now, there is more to come. Keep watching. Here's my stack somewhere around the time after this hand. I remember taking this picture thinking I wanted to commemorate having this much money on the table, having no idea what was about to happen next. I am under the gun, straddling 25. Albert's got the double straddle of 50. It's gonna fold around to Todd. I was gonna raise it up to 200, and I'm gonna look down at ace three suited. I've got a couple options. I can call, I can three bet. The reason you would want to three bet is to get Albert out of the hand and play heads up. Also, you might just have the best hand. You never know if he might raise king, queen, jack, 10. Now that we just called, Albert's gonna be in position against us. It probably would've been better to three bet. But now we flop an ace high flush draw again. Another flush draw, thankfully without a paired board. Queen nine four. Todd, who was the preflop raiser, checks to me. I'm gonna bet 300. And after losing that last hand, Albert's gonna be given an employment application. Todd's gonna make the call for 300. Going to a turn. It's the deuce of clubs. We have the nuts, a side flush draw with a steel wheel redraw. Todd's gonna check it over to me and I'm gonna bet.
Todd's in a tough spot with three clubs on board. Any hand that he would check on this flop is also gonna have a hard time calling on this turn. And it does look like Albert's gonna go ahead and apply for that dealing position. So over to Todd. He does tank for quite a while. I actually expected him to fold. He ends up making the call of $500. And we're going to the river. The river's the king of clubs, which initially seems like a pretty bad card. Not only does that put a four flush on board, but it also means he didn't have the king of clubs. So he can't have a king high flush, but he's going to lead into me for $500 on the river. I still have the absolute nuts. Todd has a stack of about maybe 1500 or so. It's hard to tell because he's shuffling his black chips. I do tank for a little while. I'm definitely just gonna put them all in here. And I'm all in. Todd doesn't call right away, which means he probably put a little blocker bet out there. We're actually just gonna talk about Todd's hand because I ended up seeing it. He has pocket jacks with the jack of clubs. It actually makes a lot of sense for how the hand played out, checking the flop, check on the turn, and now on the river, putting a small bet out but once he gets raised, I think he realizes I'm never doing this with anything other than the ace of clubs. And he does make a really good fold. Pocket jacks, the jack of clubs, the second nuts going into the muck. Good fold, Todd. Good fold. And look at this. Albert is going to straddle $500 on the button. Now you have to assume players are gonna play, again, pretty straightforward when you have a $500 button straddle. And I look down at pocket juggalos, just me and Albert left in the hand. Getting my chips together, gonna make a raise. I don't need to make it too big. I make it 1.2K, just enough that Albert can call with lots of fun hands. But make him pay a price, don't let him get in too cheap. Albert's in the tank thinking about what to do. And he's all in for $7,000. I had to take a sec, no, I just snap call. $14,000 pot, all in pre-flop, pocket jacks, the flop is seven, six, deuce. Turn is a three. River pairs the boards, the three. Albert announces two pair, which makes me realize I probably have the best hand. I table my jacks and Albert mucks. I take down a $14,000 pot after already winning a previous $17,000 pot. Stacking these chips up. At this point, I have no idea how much money is in my stack, but at the end of the night, this is my stack and I booked a $30,000 win, 29,236. Making this almost 3x my previous best win, which would have been a positive $11,000 session. What a huge session. I definitely got lucky. You have to get lucky sometimes in poker. You can't just always win with skill. And when you get lucky, you want to maximize on that. Thanks for watching the vlog, guys. Please forward this video to at least one of your poker friends right now. I don't know how many more vlogs like this I'll be making, but if I have another crazy winning session, you'll be seeing it. But you can watch me play on Saturdays on the live stream with whole cards. It's on this same YouTube channel. Please come and check me out.